Hi everyone, Kate here for a very different kind of video. I am making this video as a response to the question that Natalie from Curious Reader put in my Q&A video and she asked for what my favorite picture books were. So I thought it's such a visual thing. I will show you my favorite picture books and let's just get started. So the first one are the small books by Lois Lenski. So first we have Cowboy Small, which oh, I just love this. So Lois Lenski does the illustrations for the Betsy Tacey books, but the first four Betsy Tacey books, but I just don't think, I don't like it that much for that. But for these, I just think it looks really, really charming. So I love that one. And then we have The Little Train, so it's Engineer Small. So, so cute. And then Arthur's second birthday is this weekend. And so we have gotten him the little fire engine where it's fireman small. Aren't these precious? So I love those. Then uh, another board book that it has seen better days, but it is The Pout Pout Fish uh, by Deborah Deason. And we love this book. We've Our family, we find ourselves quoting it because we've just read it so much that I'm a pout pout fish with a pout pout face. So I spread the dreary wearies all over the place. And it's about the pout pout fish and how everyone tells him he shouldn't be so sad. And then eventually he meets, um, where is she? Yes, a shimmery fish. And she kisses him and he learns he's a kiss kiss fish. So we really like this one. I need to tape it because like I said, it's seen better days. And then a really classic one by Bill Martin Jr. And John Arkenbolt is Chicka Chicka Boom Boom. So this is great, I think, for when kids are, um, you're wanting them to be there when they're pre-readers. And so I love you just, it's so filled with seeing all the different letters and it's really, really fun. And it's really sweet because Arthur will find it and he'll bring it to me and say, read boom, boom. So I love that. Uh, then I love this, the Jesus storybook Bible written by Sally Lloyd Jones, illustrated by Jago. And this just kind of takes the highlights from the old Testament and new Testament. These are the walls of Jericho and Daniel and the lion's den, um, the light of the whole world. So the star of David and um, Jesus with the snake in the wilderness. I really, really, really like this book. And it's just got such a great, um, it's really good at conveying the significant and overall message of the Bible. So I really recommend that. And then I'm going to shift you up a little bit. Then I have a couple by Peter Spear, who's an illustrator that I love. And so this first one, another rough one. This is what happens when you have kids, the rough on books. And also this one, though, is for my husband's childhood. So this one, the Caldecott, which is very cool. And it's an incredibly visual one. It's not quite a wordless picture book, but it doesn't have all that many words. But I just love Peter Spear's art. Um, it's so, so beautiful. And um, yeah, it's just a really beautiful book. But the one that I might actually prefer over that one is his The Fox Went Out on a Chilly Night. Peter Spear has many, many books. I wonder if there's any. And there's one. There's People and Circus, which I think we've gotten Circus from the library, but not People. But he took the folk song, The Fox Went Out on a Chilly Night. This is another Caldecott winner or Caldica Honor, this one. And uh, he thought it would just be perfect for New England. And so I, what I love is it's just the song of The Fox Went Out on a Chilly Night, which is a song I was sung a lot. I was sung that a lot as a kid. And so I'm very sentimental about it. So we gave this to Peter for his birthday last year. And I just love uh, the vividness of the colors and how he tells the story. And it's just, I love his illustrations. So that one's a really fun one. And then yet another one that's seen better days. This is the circus ship and it's really fun. It's just about a ship of circus animals that has a terrible, terrible owner, Mr. Payne and the ship wrecks and they end up in this little village and they, uh, the tiger saves a little girl in the village. So the villagers say they can stay and help them hide from the mean circus owner. And I just love, um, Chris Van Dusen's illustrations. I really like them. Then one that my sister got me because she knows how much I love Victorian things. M is for monocle, a Victorian alphabet. And I just love this. Um, 
It's just really, really charming. J is for journeyman, I for inkwell, H is for helmet, G is for garden, um, R is for recruit, Q is for quail, S is for sleuth, that's totally supposed to be homes, and T is for trunk. I really, really like that one. And then another um, two authors I have loved all of their books, Janet and Alan Allberg. They also did The Jolly Postman and The Jolly Christmas Postman. So this one is Peekaboo. And I love the domestic scenes in this. So each one has a peekaboo scene and you just see a little bit and then you flip it and they can see the whole thing. And it talks about what everything that the baby can see. Um, and it's really, really charming. So I definitely recommend that one. And then they also have the baby's dictionary, which we did have, but Arthur tore it up. Um, but uh, we still have in good condition also each peach pear plum, which incorporates all these different fairy tale characters and it rhymes. So it's really fun to read aloud and it's not too long. That's another thing about reading aloud to kids. It needs to not be too long. Okay, you can tell this one has been used a lot. The Little Blue Truck. This is another rhyming one that we find ourselves quoting just kind of involuntarily. And it's about all these animals working together to push the dump truck out of the mud. It's a very satisfying one to read. A really great interactive one is Don't Wake Up the Tiger. And this one is really fun, especially for Arthur's age. And Tiger is fast asleep and we shouldn't wake her up. And then you have, um, they're in a hurry and they've got a big bunch of balloons to carry. So then you're supposed to pet her nose so she won't wake up. And then you're supposed to blow as hard as you can to make the balloon stay over her. And then pet her tummy. And um, so it's really, oh, and then you're supposed to rock on this page so she'll stay asleep. So I really like how interactive that one is. Okay, then I have two by David McCauley. He writes such wonderful um, sort of nonfiction, although this is not about a real cathedral that was made, but about architecture and <clears throat> has amazing drawings. And so this is about, it's not about a real cathedral, but it's, it's very, very realistic, <clears throat> excuse me, realistic in all the steps that would have been made to build it. And it's incredibly detailed and it's so fascinating just to hear about everything that people had to do, um, so yeah, there's one more that we have by him and I just find them just really, really wonderful, wonderful books. I was so happy to find that at the library. This is one we got from the library recently and it's so funny. Waiting for Winter, my son was laughing so hard while I read this and all these animals are, they have, they're less than a year old and so they've never seen the snow and so they're all wondering what the snow is going to be like um, and they all just kind of, guess wrong about what the snow is like. Let's see if I can find. They say it's white and cold and soft. And so, yeah, so the hedgehog finds a toothbrush. So he thinks the toothbrushes are snow. And like I said, my son was laughing so hard at that. Um, then a newer book we got from the library, and it's now a new favorite of mine, A Race Around the World, The True Story of Nellie Bly and Elizabeth Byland. And this is illustrated by Alexandra Bai, and it's written by Caroline Star Rose, who's written a fair amount of middle grade fiction that I want to read. But these illustrations, and this is based on a true story, so it's really cool to hear about these women that raced against each other to see who could get around the world in a shorter span of time. Uh, so yeah, it's a really remarkable story. I definitely recommend it. And then another new one from the library that's now a new favorite, this is Camp Tiger. And it's about this little boy who goes camping with his parents and then kind of ends up with this tiger as an imaginary friend. He, he thinks there's a tiger there. And so then it's all the adventures that the tiger does with him while they're on, while they're camping together. And it has just amazing, amazing illustrations. Um, I really, really love them. And it's a really just a fun story. So I definitely recommend Camp Tiger by Susan Choi. Illustrated by John Rocco. I realize I should be saying author names. Then we have Badger's Perfect Garden, written by Marcia Diane Arnold, illustrated by Ramona Kalitsky. And what I love about this is this are for your more your kids that are more tightly wound. This is about when plans don't go the way that you want them to, how it can be okay. So Badger 
takes care of the garden and wants it to be just so and the lines to be straight and then a storm comes and changes things and he's so worried and then something really wonderful happens out of it so i really like that one then oh this is so charming a big moon cake for a little star by grace lynn and what i love about this are the illustrations and so they make this moon cake mama and little star make the moon cake and then she falls asleep and she really really wants to eat the moon cake even though she knows she's not supposed to and she eats the moon cake but i just love these illustrations how the black background and you can see all the little crumbs following her it's really really charming another new one from the library is a night out by daniel miares this is one of the ones that people are saying might get the Caldecott this year. And these illustrations, it's, it doesn't have too many words, but it's just got a really um, enchanting plot to it. And so we just enjoy looking at the pictures a lot. I never feel I really know how to read wordless picture books that well. Uh, then we have, what is it? The Lyle Lyle Crocodile Books by... Who are these by? Bernard Weber. And so there's a whole series of these. And they're about this friendly crocodile, Lyle, and all of the adventures that he gets into. And it's a really, really fun series. I definitely really like those. They are long, though, so you have to be willing to read a longer book. This is so cool. Magic Rama and the Story of Momofuku Ando, written by Andrea Wang, illustrated by Kana Urbanowitz. And it's the story of instant ramen. And it's so fascinating to hear about Momofuku Ando and everything that he did to make instant ramen what it is today and to help poor people be able to get food. And yeah, it's, it's just amazing. So I really, really like this one. Another one that was making my son laugh is The Little Red Cat Who Ran Away and Learned His ABCs the Hard Way by Patrick McDonald. And <laughs> it's just very, very funny. So it takes the typical like alphabet, but then makes it have a plot to it. So A, and then B, C. I really, really liked it. So it was fun because I would tell Peter the sounds for each letter, you know, da, 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 and he would have to tell me what it was. Um, and he had a lot of fun with that and was laughing so hard. This is a Caldecott winner. And this is The Snow by Berta and Elma, Elma Hader. And it's all of the animals, what they do when there's snow. how they cope. I love it. Owl at Home by Arnold Arnold Lobel is very, very funny. The illustrations might not be my favorite, but it's funny enough that I'm kind of just willing to forgive it. It's really, really funny. So we were laughing, or I was laughing a lot while reading it. And then uh, William Stieg is an author that I like. And this is Amos and Boris. It's about a mouse and a whale and how they become friends and the adventures that they have. And William Stieg, there's a couple more by him that I have in this stack. That's actually maybe my least favorite out of them. Oh, then we have Mike Mulligan and his steam shovel by Virginia Lee Burton. She's also written Katie uh, and the Big Snow, The Little House, and Maybelle. I love The Little House. I, I like well enough Maybelle and Katie, but Mike Mulligan and his steam shovel is definitely my favorite out of this. And it's just about this man named Mike Mulligan who has a steam shovel and kind of industrialization that happens. And people aren't using steam shovels as much in a way that they're still able to be useful. And it's really, really a great story. I'm kind of repeating myself a lot, just saying it's a great story. It's a great story. <laughs> But they are all great stories. So Make Way for Ducklings by Robert McCloskey. And this takes place in Boston. And it's all about the duck family looking for a place to live. And what I love is you can do a Make Way for Ducklings tour of Boston and see all the different sites that they see. I really, really love it. Uh, Robert McCloskey, there's another one by him that I have in this stack. Then the Frog and Toad books, also by Arnold Lobel. I love these books. The dry sense of humor in here is just so great. The illustrations are rather simple. They're not really anything amazing, but I'm so nostalgic about them that I like them. But the humor of these stories, they're just incredibly enjoyable to read aloud. I really, really like those. 
And then uh, by Tommy DiPaola, which actually his art I'm not really a fan of, but I do love this story, The Knight and the Dragon. This is mostly a wordless picture book. There's a few words, but it's about a knight and a dragon training to fight and then kind of the resolution that they, that they have. Another William Stieg is Pizza Pizza. So since we have a Peter, it's really fun to have this book. And it's all about Peter who's sad and his parents cheer him up by turning him into a pizza. And it always makes us smile when we read it. And then I think my favorite William Stieg is Sylvester and the Magic Pebble. All about Sylvester who finds a magic pebble that will grant him any wish that he wants, but how it really complicates things for him really like that one and then I did I have a picture here for you of Dr. DeSoto by William Stieg I this one might be tied with, actually with Sylvester and the Magic Pebble definitely recommend it it's really enjoyable and very very funny that one won um, the Newberry it's very short for a Newberry book I'm kind of surprised it won a Newberry um, but it did I mean as opposed to a Caldecott it seems more like a picture book to me but I think I will leave it here and then I will do a part two. I hope you enjoyed this and I will be back for another video soon.